there hackers welcome to the sixth video on the series chat application using monstack in this video we'll set up socket i for the client and the server we'll also authenticate users uh, using a socket i middleware so i have a written version of this tutorial on my blog i'll link it in the description it really helps while following along with the tutorial so let's get started let's open this backend folder in visual studio code mm -hmm. so once we have done that let's open the front end folder in visual studio code so now that's done so let me close this terminal so yeah so let's shift this um, back into the text up two and we have got the back end in the right text up and the front end in the left text up so now let's get start writing some code so we'll start by creating a page so we'll create chat room page maybe you already have guys so chat room page so what we'll do here is we'll just rfc and hit tab so that will create a react functional component so we'll just keep this simple as chat room page so we'll have to register a route to this page so we'll go to app.js we'll add an exact route and this will be slash chat room slash id this is a variable parameter which we'll access in our component i'll show you exactly how to do that just in a moment so get the props so what you can do is you can restructure this props using so since it's a direct child of the react router we'll get match you will also get location and everything so we'll get this maths and what we'll do is we'll get um, chat room id equal to maths dot params dot id because that's what we defined in our route so that's how we get this so <coughs> we have to install socket IO client on the front end. So <clears throat> I'll be just creating a local state in the chat room page, but in React you can always shift the state in a higher level so that you can um, repeat or reduce the message request. Uh, you can reduce the API calls. So keeping it persistent in the state is a better thing but we'll skip that for this video. So what we're going to do is we are going to create a socket. So what we'll do is we'll create socket, we'll create IO equal to require. No, this is not Node.js. So we'll first import IO. Import IO from socket io client so this must get it just not sure how to use this socket io client let's see so if you get confused just don't forget to look the documentation <clears throat> so i think that is how it's done so let's create a socket variable this is a studio kit is getting slow due to this npm install so create a socket variable that will be io and we'll call the route http localhost and the port is 8000 i guess so so the port is 8000 and we'll pass in on options and we'll pass a query and that will be this install is really slowing up my pc so in the query we'll send the token so where do we get the token we'll get it from the local storage local storage dot get item and what we name it we i think we need a cc token so that's what we'll be sending 
so this will send the token while connecting and that's when we can handshake with it so <clears throat> bear with me this might seem complicated but it'll just make sense when you start working with the backend so let's start this uh, hopefully it's, it, it will work so let's shift to the backend okay yeah it worked so let's shift to the backend hit npm start um, so now that we have so what we'll do is we'll go to app.js no not app.js server.js and what we'll do is we'll install the socket io install socket io for the server socket io client for the client so front end and socket io for the back end so what we'll do is this app.listen will return our server so we'll get it get the server in a variable then we'll create io equal to um, <coughs> require socket.io and pass the server to the constructor and i think that will that's how it's done so <coughs> so what we'll do is um we'll do io dot use so we'll add this middleware for the authentication so that's it so io dot use what we'll use is we'll give you the socket and we'll use the next so what we'll do is uh, we'll get the token first so we'll get say const token equal to socket dot handshake dot query dot sorry that socket handshake dot query dot token because that's what we passed over here so you can see socket uh, yeah query token so that's what we passed in the options so that's so whatever options you pass will go to socket dot handshake and you pass the query and you pass the token so we'll get the token we'll go to the middleware for our authentication so we require jwt so that's what we'll require over here as well so we'll require jwt and we'll do the try cat block just like that so that's it make this in a sync function because we are using a wait so so this will not be register status uh, will not do anything just skip it so we'll just we don't need this we just don't need this as well so bring this in the try block we'll await JWT verify token and not requested payload we will use socket dot uh, let's see user id that's what we'll name it what we'll do is we'll do payload dot id that's what we had i think so so let's let me just confirm it so user log in so that's id user id so yeah we have the id so we'll keep it in the user id and that's that's it i guess so we'll set up socket dot on connection what we'll do is we'll get the socket and this is the client socket if you don't know this is the socket io server and this is the client socket don't get confused so socket once we have we'll just console log connected connected uh, well the socket dot user id i think that will work so also we'll go to socket dot on this connect if i'm not wrong we'll just what we'll do is we'll console log um this connected socket dot id hopefully it will it should work so one more thing we need to do is we need to go to dashboard page and whenever we click join so 
before we create that we should get an endpoint so we don't have we have a chat room controller create chat room so one more route we need to add go to the chat rooms and get us on get slash um, get all chat rooms that's what we'll do so export dot get all chat rooms equal to a sync request response and that's it so get all the chat rooms so how we'll get the chat room we'll just use the chat room model const chat rooms equal to await chat room dot find and we'll pass nothing and that should return all the chat rooms and what we'll do is register json chat rooms so this will return the array of chat rooms in our json so how about we test this api go to register you can use postman by the way so that's it so instead of post we'll make it get and let's send so we have onkey chat room over here and we have underscore id over here so that's what we'll be calling from the front end so let's do this guys so dashboard page we don't have any state so we'll create a state for chat rooms set chat rooms equal to react dot use state or what we want to do we want to um, make it an empty array at the beginning so now that's done let's create a function so const get chat rooms equal to a function we'll need axios so import axios from axios pretty simple so i'll just copy and paste something so where is this login page and that's it so this is what we should do not the login so uh we need to pass the so maybe let's let's do it axios.cat slash chat room comma and what we want to pass is we want to pass um headers um and headers will be an object authorization and what we'll pass is bearer and and what is it local storage dot get item uh, cc underscore token if i'm correct so that will just call the endpoint dot then so the then will give us response and what we can do is set <coughs> chat rooms because response is response data will be an array so we can directly set it to the chat rooms so once we have this so let's do this um on dot cats so let's do this so what we want to do is we want to recall this get chat rooms set timeout get chat rooms after maybe three seconds yeah so if there's a network issue or something, we'll just refresh this one. So we we'll want to create a lifecycle loop, react or use effect. And what we'll do is we'll pass in a function here. So this function will uh, just call the get chat rooms. And when we want to run, we want to run this on document on load. So this is going to call issues. So let's do this yes lint disable next line yes that's how we suppress the zero so chat rooms is assigned to a value but never used okay so this we were repeating this one so let's remove the next two so now what we'll do is we'll get the chat rooms dot map and chat room for each chat room we want to render this this div okay so we want to render this step but every child must have a key prop right so for key equal to chat room dot 
underscore id so that's it so we want a link so we want to whenever the user clicks this join button we need to link it so link so it should auto import from react auto dom <clears throat> sorry about that so um where did it go so link to so what we want to do is tap this on a link and this should work so link to so what we want to do is we want to use javascript because it's a variable so link to chat room slash chat room i think that's what we set up in the app just slash chat room slash id so slash chat room slash plus chat room dot underscore id because that's what we're receiving in the api right so that's it and instead of happy new by we want the chat room dot name so that will be chat room dot name so so that should render it out for us let's see the front end oh what's wrong let's see what's wrong so network will go this uh something is, did i do something wrong 8000 chat room okay so my bad guys so this will be http localhost 8000 slash chat room that should get it yep so this is point nine the underscore underline between that so that can be fixed with simple css fix so go to styles go to common add this a text decoration none and that should fix it okay so what's the main color of this so we have so I think this color should be as 3d3 so that should do it okay so now that we have set up this one I think we can proceed to this chat room wait a minute okay okay I, I get it so my mistake so we don't want to render the jasper page we want to enter the chat room page so that's it so we see it got auto imported so join maybe now it will work so we got the chat room page let's see so yeah you can see our user has connected and the authorization was successful so we go back i think yeah the user got disconnected for some reason okay go back so that's how you do authentication and authorization with socket io so whenever the user closes this tab we should get a disconnected yeah so um so i didn't want to um make this um, uh, local variable that's really annoying because it's not working so what we'll do in the next video is we'll shift the socket to our context so that it doesn't get recreated so see you can see there are three connected and three disconnected once I exit the page so that's not something you want that's why we'll just shift the um, socket to a upper level of state so that it doesn't get recreated again and again whenever the chat room page is created so that's it for this video guys do subscribe and comment for any suggestions and i'll see you in the next video